Next up we have Kevin2600 doing the Grand Theft Auto with uh, digital key hacking. Please give him a warm Packet Hacking Village welcome. Hi. Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, th thanks for attending my talk. Uh, it's my first time at uh, DEF CON speech, so bear with me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so today I'd like to share with you my research results uh, regarding one of the digital car key system. Uh, yeah, okay, let's do it. Uh, my, my name is Kevin. Uh, to, yeah, you can follow me on Twitter, Kevin2600. Um, I'm a security researcher from InGeek Security Consultant based in Shanghai, China, and we are focused on uh, automotive automotive uh, securities. Um, for my area, I'm focused on wireless and embedded systems, right? So, yeah. Um, today's uh, agenda is going to be like this. First, I will uh, run a very quick introduction on Key Fobs 101, and then I will walk through the structure and functionality of this, our target today, which is called uh, uh, AMI Key. It's like right here. Um, and then I will talk about how, that, how am I analyzing and um, what's, what kind of attack vectors I found uh, for this uh, AMI keys. Right, so like for example, we we got to talk about uh, from physical layer, RF layer, and up to applications, and and then eventually we we can see how can we uh, sniff in the Bluetooth traffic, and eventually we decrypt the encryptions. Okay, so introduction. So I think uh, key fob is most one uh, one of the most common items we can find in our pocket. Um, the it start with a very uh, simple. Um, it's just a mechan in, in the early days, it's only just uh, me me mechanic keys. And then they implement uh, some kind of remote control. Uh, in the very beginning, they start with infrared, and then there's RF with a fixed code, and then RF with rolling code. So they also have uh, some kind of passive entry. Um, so basically, they put a, a RFID chip inside your car keys, so for authentication reason. Now, here, nowadays, they come a new uh, game changer because um, it, uh, so, sorry. so nowadays you can actually use in your mobile phone as, uh, uh, as, as your car keys. And for example here, the Tesla Model 3, if you're buying one of these, you're not going to have any physical keys. They could only give you uh, a RFID tag and then also um, you can download a mobile phone app to actually to start engine unlock lock your cars. And Tesla is not the only one doing it. Uh, I think probably everybody uh, going to have this uh, feature in, a, in a, uh, other, any other uh, manufacturers, right? So um, let's take, talk about a little bit about what has been done in the past. So in the past few, few years, in the past years, many uh, researchers have found the vulnerabilities uh, dedicated to key fobs. Right, so for example, uh, one of the loading code uh, algorithm key lock has been cracked, and somebody, some researcher has uh, working on a high tech too. Um, yeah, but from the list, you, if you notice that in 2015, there's one of uh, to, uh, uh, a researcher has found a vulnerability in BMW connected drive. Um, and also another uh, researcher from Pentas Partners, they found uh, issues on Wi-Fi uh, access point from the uh, Mitsubishi Outlanders. And those two are the new uh, attack vectors. It's not just dedicated to key fobs anymore. It, they actually, there's more uh, uh, technology involved. So yeah, let's, talk, um, let's take a look at more details. And so he, this one is uh, uh, for the BMW connected drive. So basically, a German researcher he found he able to uh, set up a fake base station to and then the main issue here is the BMW rely on HTTP to communicate with backend server. Um, so basically, he, the researcher can set up a fake base station and once he reverse engineer the uh, entire protocols, he able to send and replay with it, right? Okay, and then another example here is the. Uh, Pentas partners researcher they found they, uh, the Wi-Fi access point provided by Miss Bush or Lander is so easy to crack, so they can uh, connect to it and reverse engineer controlling protocols. So and then they can disk 
uh, turn on and off air conditional heatings and even a lot alarm systems, right? So those are the uh, new uh, attack vectors. So I say if when the new trend, new technology invent being, being implemented, there are always going to be some kind of new hacks, right? Okay, so let's t um, let's walk through our uh, main target today. So like this, uh, very simple. Um, yeah, it's called a uh, ME key. It's a uh, uh, it's aka digital car keys. It's invested by a a company called Xiaomi uh, in China. So basically, uh, this one is able to enable people with the old um, old model of the cars, which don't have lot, those uh, fancy features. So if but you if if you still want to um, use uh, to 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 control your car doors with mobile phones, you can use it just connecting this uh, little device to your car, and you're good to go, right? So and here's some our features the highlights. Uh, so yeah, it's basically is rely on Bluetooth low energy, and we can unlock lock the your cars. And the now the one of the interesting feature here is uh, uh, remote key sharing, right? And this I think this is a, a good feature. Uh, it's really, really distinguished with the tra uh, traditional car keys because if you want to share your cars with uh, uh, your friends, you, 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 can, you, you can do that in different countries, right? Um, for Ami key, they limited, uh, they only can limit to up to 20 users. So uh, you see this uh, little, uh, picture here, it's basically you're just connecting your Ami key uh, to, 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 to the keyhole here and you, you, ha you have to left the layer, right? When you, 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 and then you lock it and then once you come back, you can lock and unlock it. Do the uh, normal thing, right? Oh, so here, uh, just the components. Uh, you see, as you can see, it's very simple. It comes come with a, a, a blank key, and also this is the actual main board here. We're going to look at more details in this particular uh, this one. And here is another uh, square little box across uh, key sensors. Uh, yeah, yeah, sensors. Yeah. So here's the. Uh, um, how you gonna uh, get that work? First, you, we, we download the application from the key, and then we do the normal process, like we, we're duplicating the keys, and and then we you, we need to scan in the barcode from the AMI key, and uh, to in order to get a uh, activation code. Now, once we get action code, activation code, and then we will put uh, in the application, then we activate it. Once it's activated, we can lock and unlock, right? And you know. Just like uh, uh, like uh, if you lost your key, you go to a car dealers. You need to register your key with a, a new key to the vehicles. So we, we need to do the same here. We need to register uh, our AMI key to the to the cars, right? Very simple. Um, also, as uh, AMI key clan, they support uh, many models of the cars. So, so as you can see, you, you find like Ford, uh, Volkswagen, uh, Toyota. Hangtai, yeah, all those cars. So it's pretty, pretty much, uh, probably maybe everyone. Um, yeah, so now we take a look more details, right? Uh, the, the, uh, the, fir the first thing when you, when, when we're targeting uh, reverse engineering, uh, embedded systems, most, uh, the first stage is to, to do some recon, right? So we, at this stage, we try to get as much as possible, uh, the information as much as possible. So first, um, when I received these car keys, I, I'm not sure what's inside it. So I want to see more details, right? But the, uh, sometimes uh, the manufacturer may have some kind of protection mechanism uh, preventing us to open it, right? If, if you open it, it may, may, may damage the, uh, erase the firmware automatically, uh, we don't know yet. So what I would do is I go, to, I suggest we can, if we possible, we go to using some kind of x-ray machine, we take pictures, take a look inside, then we can make sure there's nothing to prevent us to open it, right? So yeah, that's the case. The ME key didn't have anything uh, inside, so let's go ahead and open it. Okay, n so now we, once we open it, we see actually there's actually two boards inside. One, uh, the yellow board here, and then there's the green one here. So uh, the middle one here is just the back side of the, back side of the, uh, 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 the green board. So we can use this uh, connector to connect into each other, right? So yeah. Um, so if any of us have do done much uh, reverse engineering on embedded systems, then we will know the first steps we like to just take a look at the, uh, to find out uh, the model of the chip, right? So for this one, um, it's called CC2640. Once I, I Googled it and I found out this, okay, this is actually the BDLE module 
to the other Bluetooth. And the other the green board is from NSP and that's the one to actually uh, emulate the uh, lock and unlock command through RF. And also uh, when, when, when we're dealing with our wireless devices usually uh, they will come with the FCC ID but since this one is only dedicated to Chinese market they're using a similar system called C uh, uh, CMIT ID. Well, it's, it's really just uh, same, same, same thing, right? So, now there's one thing interesting. Remember, I mentioned that there's a, a square, uh, little square box there. It's called a, uh, sensors. Now, I don't know why they, they have there because so I, I, re I read the manuals. I read uh, our official website and even just uh, with the uh, official applications. There's no no sign of uh, how can we use it and what what really for. Oh, oops. What it was really for. So, yeah, functionalities are known. Um, but still, I, I like to find out more. Um, so, I take, uh, open it, and you, you went, uh, using the uh, Bluetooth to connect into it. Um, yeah, as you can see, it is really, just, you mentioned that this is a smart key sensor, and then we can find out UID here, but still, we don't know what to do with it, right? So, I look at it a little bit more. Um, I check out the data sheet, I try to connect into it uh, through your art or to uh, try talk to the spy, um, but still not much useful information. But anyway, uh, since this uh, key sensor here not not will not bother, uh, it, it won't affect any other uh, general op uh, normal operations. So I just leave that for the, for the moment. Maybe in the future I find more details. I can always just come back to to, to do more research. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, RF uh, module, uh, the green board. So, and on back back side of it is there's a crystal here. We can we can see the um, the value is a 13.56 megahertz. So when when then we can do a very simple math, we can find out the bit rate uh, and potential the frequency range. Right, very simple. And now we need a way to verify it. So I set up a very sim simple SDR. Uh, environment, we're just using a, a hacker IF here and then uh, connect to the antenna and I just keep pressing the button to try to see if we can find anything, right? So yes, um, we can see clearly uh, it is within the 433 megahertz uh, ISN band range, right? There's a piece, there's peaks here, um, yeah. Um, oh, I also take a look at the, uh, uh, the yellow Yellow uh, board which is a uh, Bluetooth board. Uh, now, when I connect into it using Light Blue or NF Connect, it doesn't matter. Um, it, what we can see here is the uh, it constantly broadcasts this MAC address, right? So basically, maybe this is uh, I can see. Okay, this is maybe the way we can track you because this is a unique MAC address here. And also, uh, most in interesting thing is those uh, you, what kind of UID they have provided, right? Uh, okay, so w if we wanted to do more interactive with you, uh, I mean, key here, we we not just we, we can also use in uh, some tool called Get Tool under the Linux. Um, yeah, so here is a picture I connect into it. I list the, all the UID here. So if you ever done uh, Bluetooth hacking, then you will know the UID is actually the, uh, one of the most uh, important uh, information you need to find out. And um, yeah. So, and also if we want to see more details, um, we can enable the um, function from Android phones that which is in, de in developer mode, we can actually dump all the uh, BTLE traffic and then we can uh, road this log file into a Wireshark and start to analyzing every step of the uh, traffic, right? So for example here, I request the, the battery level and then we just tell you how, how many battery still left, right? So okay, the mobile application is going to be like this. Uh, uh, project is actually in Chinese, but it's actually it's, I'm going to translate, and it's very simple. It, first, you need you need contact connect to your car uh, Amiki, and then once you connect it, there's a couple of function here, just uh, lock or unlock it, right? And also there's a key sharing feature here. So let's take a look more. Um, just like uh, uh, every probably everyone else, they don't bother to hardening your APK files, so it's easy. We can just uh, actually our uh, Java bytecode, and almost like uh, reading the source code here. So, for example, this type uh, here is just um, how the algorithm how they generate those UIDs. Uh, okay. Now, 
sometimes uh, developer go too too much, go for uh, go too far. Uh, um, yeah. So uh, okay. Um, so here they they le leak some uh, sensitive information inside the code. So basically, this this they they have this web page inside the code. But when I try to access it, it actually mentioned this is uh, like uh, their internal systems. Is uh, if you are not an employee, you shouldn't be accessed. So to what what was the point you live there, right? <laughs> um, and then also, well, if you you able to understand Chinese, this is they, they, they left some so way so many uh, funny comments like what the hell here? Yeah, yeah, he actually say what the hell? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he he's in a uh, she or he in not in a very good mood. Uh, okay, now now even get even more f uh, uh, more fun. So when I try when we try to rever uh, try to to investigate some uh, systems, we usually uh, do some. Uh, main in the middle, uh, using main in proxy or a burp, we can do the same. Uh, the, the actually, the first thing I, I expect I expecting is uh, to see if the application has enabled uh, search panning or not. But turns out we don't need to uh, already uh, uh, to, to, to worry about any of that because it's completely rely on HTTP, right? Um, so, so we all understand once the, your traffic go HTTP, so everything is going to be in plain text. So yeah, if we able to sniff in with you, uh, in, in your network, and then we able to find out some information regarding your, your devices. For example, this is key information. Oh, you probably not can see, but it's actually IMEI numbers. Uh, but, yeah, so they're le leaking uh, all your privacy information. So here's one more. Here, when you, when we register register with a system, um, you we, you when you when you register account you usually they, they, they will ask you some set up some security questions um, in order to you, in case you are uh, lost your uh, password you can always have a way to get it back so yeah you if they go through all this process through HTTP you, you when, when we sniff it we're able to find out uh, um, it, all of your answers so maybe in the future we can yeah some, find a way to hijack your, your uh, account right so a uh, little summary here. Really, uh, army key application communicate with backend server is really completely rely on HTTP. So yeah, no more PRC. Um, but there's more here. Uh, I was going to talk about later. Um, I'll show you how actually can leading us to compromising the, 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 the army key. So there must be some encryption, right? Because uh, in their manual, they actually put a specific mention um, their product is using Bluetooth uh, 4.0 technology, but they are using very secure, unique, uh, army own proprietary in encryptions. So, right, cool. Um, this picture I, I borrowed from the, uh, their official website. As you can see, they, they put all the fancy words there, right? right? Just maybe just I don't know. Try to scare you off, maybe, right? So, but still, I I I, I when I look at the this picture, oh, I always get impressed. Wow, they they are in, they, they are spend much uh, eff effort in their products, right? But anyway, let's let's <laughs> yeah, Let, let's let's find out if this is true or not. So first, I like to do some physical access. Now remember, um, the AMI key by request, we have to left the key inside the car. Right, so maybe those theft will not um, can a simple way to do it, just bre breaking your glass by force and then get your key. They have the key, but however, they cannot connect in to your key to 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 start your engine, for example. Um, but what we can do here is really we get a blank key, um, we replace the chip uh, from the RF module from the army key to to the uh, blank one, and then that way we can actually just re unlock in your uh, uh, the vehicles. Right. So here I would like to play a uh, very simple uh, uh, video just to prove my point that will work. Yeah, the car is right now is locked. Um, yeah, so now we're just using the blank key with the chip replaced. Yeah, very simple. Yeah, it, it's working. Uh, however, this process. Uh, in, involves uh, kind of violence. You need to actually break in. Uh, hold on, just let me go back to the. Okay, you you need to to break in the glass, right? So I don't like this uh, method, but it, it actually works. So okay, let's do some RV jumping, right? Um, so when when we start um, 
I started to research a little bit more, uh, I found out that that's quite a popular in the theft world, maybe. <laughs> le 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 those theft like to using the device called car key jammer. So basically, uh, they, they can actually make a lot of uh, money from it, even just by selling those uh, key file jammers. So the way it works is really simple. When, when the, the theft will just simply wait in the car park, uh, they, they, they can't turn on a key jammer, and then say some victim alive, they, maybe in a rush, they uh, they just simply press the lock button and then you run away. And he, they didn't notice that actually your car uh, it doesn't actually locked. So the, the safe then can just go go get in, um, take take the goods from you, right? So but since Amiki is a smart key, right? So I wonder uh, does Amiki smart enough to detect to avoid in this kind of uh, attack. So um, turns out it maybe it's not because um, Amiki is actually a one-way communication. It's really just you send uh, you using your mobile phone sending command to the Bluetooth board and Bluetooth will send trigger uh, your green RF module to to send the uh, unlocking or lock command here. There's no uh, response from from the green board say if it's it's working or not. So here I I gonna play a ver another very simple um, demo. Right. So yeah. Okay. Just go very quick. Yeah. Well, you see, when I press the, the button here, we, we can see the the, the signal is. So that means that that, that everything's work fine. Okay. Um. Oh, sorry. It's go down too quick. And then I uh, using uh, a yard sticker to sending out the uh, the jamming signals, right? And we are back to the SDR spectrum analyzer. We can see clearly that uh, the your frequency band is already occupied. Now let's see again. When when we press the uh, button here, the LED is going to light up. Means that our RF module is working in sending out the signal, but Actually, it's, it's not working, and from application, um, we have no sign of it. So we, we cannot tell if it's working or not, right? Really. So, yeah, the AMI key were not able to help to avoid the jamming attack. Okay, right. Now, so what's next? Uh, next, uh, I would <laughs> really highly recommend you check out Sami Kamker's uh, talk. He he gave a presentation uh, a couple years ago regarding uh, called a. Uh, uh, Drive it like you hacked it. So basically, he found a way uh, called Roller Jammer to you can use not to bypass the uh, uh, key loading, a uh, uh, loading code uh, this uh, mechanism. Um, yeah. H however, um, the AMI key, the RF module is it go it's going to be vary from different models. So. Because, uh, for example, the one I I, I have is a uh, dedicated to Honda. Um, but it doesn't mean if my uh, you, if you want to play with the uh, 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 maybe Volkswagen they, they have different RV module here, so which means if I, I my, but my goal here is actually com I want to complete complete uh, compromise this is the, the key, but if they have different modules I, I I won't have the source to buy every one of them so yeah I I did I, so I start this stage but yeah I recommend I recommend this if you want interested in to hack it more in RF. Um, yeah, but let's, let's look at the key sharing, right? Since this is a very cool features. Um, the way it works is very simple. We can create a, a, a name for the, the key you want to share, and then there's a timing here. You can you can set uh, permanently, or you can uh, say uh, the time set a little time limit. And then the key, as I mentioned, is only up to 20 users. And once you reach that point, uh, the, the application will not allow you to go any further. So once you create uh, the, the, the key you want to share, then there's a uh, uh, couple ways you can dispute it to the to the to the, your friends, right? So one is that you can just they will generate a, a barcode, you can just uh, scan it and then get the key, and then there's you can send the, the key through a text message or you can just copy control uh, 
copy to to your friend. And there's one one interesting way here is actually you can send your key to your uh, through we WeChat. Now WeChat or called AKA Weixin is one of the popular uh, IM software in China. So probably everyone has it, one of them. So once, so so basically once it, the, your friend get those keys, you can simply again you type into the activation window and then simply activate it and, and then you're good to go. So what could possibly go wrong here? Remember I mentioned that uh, their traffic completely on HTTP? So basically, when 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 they send out, uh, there's uh, uh, interesting behavior. Begin uh, in the very first stage when they try to dispute your code to to your friend, they actually gonna send uh, the co complete code in plain text to one of web website, and then website will respond with a shorter uh, URL. So maybe that, that, that way it's easier to to share instead of very uh, very long key, right? Now, really, inside that URL, you just you're gonna return back an uh, entire key anyway. So yeah, if we can do something in the middle, and we can simply sniff it, and we got the key. Now, from client side of it, we can also do um, uh, when we re when we receive the the key sent by the owner, it's actually there's a barcode here. Uh, we can once we decode it, we get another URL here, and really again, it's it, we have all the uh, actual keys inside. So that means if we sniff in it, we're able to unlock in cars. So here I uh, just play one more video to for the for the proof of my point here. So, oh, sorry. Yeah. So yeah, here you get the the key from uh, by sniffing it. There's no main mean. So and then. And then you can we can just type this URL to the browser, and it will leading us to uh, active activation page from the Ami key applications. Now, once we register, we set a new name will work. Just set a simple name for your key to remember. Okay, um, we got. We got working. We, we try to to lock and lock. See the light up. So that means if we simply by sniffing your code, key code, that will work, right? So, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Again, we we can see the signal from it. So just, yeah, it, it will works. Now. So once. You, if you are a car owner, when you find out that your car been stolen, what's the reasonable, uh, what's the reasonable next move? We want to cancel it, right? Okay. Uh, sorry, <laughs> what we do? <laughs> uh, yeah. So let's see uh, the cancel. Cancel. When we try to cancel the car, this key, what, what going to happen? So, right. I tried. I gonna cancel it. So, all right, it's cancelled. So now, uh, you see, you see, if we're still able to to lock and lock your keys, what happened? So I could maybe it's because we're connected to it. So I now I disconnected it and reconnect again. It's still connected, and we still can turn on off your your, your keys. So what the hell going on here? Let's go back to the uh, uh, owner's application. You see, it actually mentioned here is the way the work, the update. You, we need to uh, look from the owner side. We have to uh, to sync night with the uh, uh, army key in order to update the cancellation. You, you, see, you see what I mean here? The, the logical is really if you lost your cars, you lost your keys. How can you can reconnect your key to cancel it? Right, so you're never able to cancel it. Okay. Um, so if you cannot cancel it, what about? Let's just wait until it expire. Right? Will that work? Ah, uh, yeah, another video. <laughs> so when when I try to do. Uh, uh, try to to research a little bit on timings. I try to bypass this. So by by doing that, I 
uh, I'm purposely set up at a time back to a few days ago so as to see if uh, it will not work, right? So, so here the uh, career says that the car is already expired and the time uh, is like 1.30, the time uh, the car is expired, right? Now, even the car is career said is expired, will still work. It's still connecting to it. And um, yeah, locking unlock command works. But what's what the hell is going on here? Even the car owners on the screen says that it's already expired. But actually, we still from user side, we still can able to uh, operate in the ME keys, right? Yeah, still work. So um, let me just further confirm the time is 140 now, uh, 143. So yeah, it's already ex it should it should be just expired. So again, in order to let the timing actual expired, we have to connect into L ME keys, right? We have to update this information to your ME key. Now again, e if you if you share a key, you little people. Are ha other people has your key and they have your car. How can you connect into it to 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 think to 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 say it's expired? You can't. So that means your expi you, the key will never expired, right? So I think that they have done very funny uh, logic on this kind of uh, key sharing. Okay. So what about Bluetooth? They, as they keep mentioning, they have very strong secure uh, encryptions. Let's find out if that's true. Uh, so again, I, when I analyzing it from the beginning, uh, this, uh, I, I will see some traffic. They keep sending uh, same, same, fi uh, same command to uh, write a request to the uh, particular UID, and that UID will respond to you some kind of random number here. But for now, we don't know what that is, what that's do. So, and then that following will be another 70 bytes of the long, long uh, random strings. Again, we have no idea what's that, what, what, what's that. Um, but finally here, and if you, you have done, ever done a Bluetooth uh, uh, research, you will know uh, we, if we want to open uh, smart locks or any sort of a Bluetooth device, we can just simply write a, a value to your uh, uh, UIDs, right? Um, now, sometimes the job can be easier because they always constantly write a fixed code. So once we have this fixed code, probably much just can it's game over. Um, but now, um, Ami key they actually send in two uh, fixed code here. I, I think this uh, one is actually simulating that you press the button. The other one is to release it. So it actually, it's two, two movement here. Um, the reason why I know this is an uh, unlocking command is because I, I actually press it three times and I see three uh, identical card, uh, uh, same code uh, uh, inside of this log file. So, can we, are we, is it getting over yet? Can we just simply write these two code to the UID and get an unlocked car? Uh, unfortunately, the first attempt failed. So, what's going on? What happened is there is uh, they, they actually in, in order to lock and unlock your ME key, you, there's uh, some kind of locking uh, process involved. So you have to lock in first, then do the rest of it. So um, I take a look at the code again. Um, we I check the code here. It's called a locking record package. So from here we we will able to find out how much uh, uh, what kind of parameter we need to. Um, to provide to, to to create a logging packet, right? So then I check the uh, that super secure algorithm. What we see here is XOR all over the place. So really, they are just rely on XOR to uh, with the different parameters. That's their secret uh, formula, right? So turns out this is the logging protocols. Remember the first uh, I mentioned that you uh, in the very beginning they will send uh, fixed. Uh, command to the, to the key and it, r it will get back some kind of uh, random value. And that's the seed to, to get from your key to, to encrypt it with your, uh, to, to generate another encryption code. So once we have the encryption code, we're able to create a login packet 
to log into it, and that's where you see a lot very long 70 bytes, and that's a, a, a logging pocket there. So once we uh, log in, we can send the, those two fixed command to unlock the car and if if we success we we're going to we, we we're going to get a response packet with to uh, OXAA um yeah so here is really the, we need to find out where's the how do we find out this uh encryption code so once we look at the code again we will be able to see uh is actually the the way it work is the, we get a, a random key from the ME, a key, ME key, random value here. Um, and then we, ex again, it's XOR with the, a secret key here. Then secret key is a, a fixed random uh, D word number again from the device initializations. Um, but turns out it's actually the secret key, they only run out only one byte. Right? Um, now, Here's the login pocket, and they, they have the, all these uh, parameters. We're going to need to create one to create a, a login pocket, right? So I noticed one over here is uh, called encrypted data, right? Uh, so uh, date. So I check the date, how they generate the date. As you can see, they, they actually see the uh, calendars. So and then they have a secret uh, method here. So you're using current character calendar date to minus 2000, and then you get a, a, a key value, and then you uh, convert to the uh, OX, uh, convert to hex, and that is your one byte encryption key. Right? So, for that, we can, uh, so for example, uh, for example, uh, uh, this year is 2018, we minus 2000, we get 18, and convert to, to hex, we get 12. So, that is our uh, encryption key here. Um, and, and, and then, once we do that, we can um, create our, uh, with, with our other value with NIF from Bluetooth, through Bluetooth traffic, we're able to create our own. Login packet. So here's the. Um, I probably cannot see clearly, but yeah. So uh, the, the Python code, very simple PLC here to uh, communicate to, to create our own packet and then try to unlock the car. So, but there's an uh, interesting here thing. I is a surprise I didn't expect is that we did, remember I mentioned if in order to get a car works, I supposed to see uh, AA back, but in the response I I, I, I actually see, see the OX6. T6. So what's going on here? Um, I spent uh, we, we, uh, spend uh, many nights to, to, to try to figure out what's going on. Uh, the, the algorithm should, is so easy to understand why it still not work. Eventually, um, we take a look at the, uh, uh, the firmware that uh, uh, provided in, inside the IPK file is, is, is for, for, the, uh, for the Bluetooth module. And we, we find out that OS T6 code is actually means that um, now that, that error code, that error code, it indicates us um, here is that we actually need, need to uh, fully. We actually need to have this put uh, everything in, back in one piece. Remember when I do the research, I take the, those two boards apart, right? So it, if uh, apparently uh, uh, Amiki has firmware function here, error code says here if you, we take it apart, it will not work, right? So we have to put it back together. Okay, that's that's fine. We put it back together. Yeah, we, we got the locking packets working fine. So now remember, um, as those uh, lo lo locking packets we we got is actually from a, 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 sh uh, um, a Bluetooth lock file dump. Um, in in a, in the protocol, we we not we're not able to do that. So an easy way we, in order to get those information is through to sniff in the packet. So, but that's easy to do. We can use in, uh, by using this application here called a TI, so smart RF, uh, smart sniff. So you can see we sniff all the, um, that's those 70 bytes of the encryption uh, uh, data and also the, the command not uh, unlocking the, uh, our cars. So yeah, again, we, we can get exactly the same details with uh, from from uh, dump files, right? So once we have info enough information, we 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 can just create our uh, the, the, the login packets, right? So really, um, one byte encryption key is not secure, right? And OSOR again is not secure. And if we can easily to get to get access to those information, it's not secure. So here I'm gonna play uh, one final demo. Uh, just prove my point. It will work here, right? Mm. 
Yeah, so I have a running. So I send it three times. As you can see, we log in successfully, and then we send the unlocking command, and you would just burp, burp three times, and that, that means this where everything is working fine, right? Yeah. Okay. Right. So, as a responsible with disclosure, I like to contact the vendor. Uh, maybe just tell them, uh, or maybe just apply a CV if possible. However, uh, I contact them a couple times through the telephone numbers here and emails. I got no reply at all. Right. So, yeah. Anyway, the conclusion here is the security by obscurity is not definitely not going to work. Um, yeah, we really we have to test our product pro uh, in a good way before it actually going on the market, right? So yeah, that's my presentation. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>